Welcome back. So we've been talking about how to approximate the derivative of a function with respect to time or space using these finite difference numerical derivatives. And so, you know, instead of taking the limit as delta t goes to zero, we use a finite delta t because computers, you know, can't take limits as things goes to go to zero. Uh, and this is one example of an approximation of dfdt called the central difference derivative. And this central difference derivative is a pretty good one. It has a good uh, error scaling, meaning that this expression approximates the derivative and only has a little bit of error that is proportional to delta t squared, um, which means that um, if I have, you know, if I, if I cut delta t in half, my error goes down by a factor of four. If I decrease delta t by a factor of 10, if I make delta t 10 times smaller, my error gets 100 times smaller, and so on and so forth, so that's very advantageous. And so this begs the question, why don't I just always make delta t as small as possible? Especially if I'm doing this numerically, you know, I have some function and I'm just approximating this numerically. Why wouldn't I always just use the smallest teensy eensiest delta t possible? You know, delta t equals 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 100, okay? So the question is, as delta t goes to zero, does the error become arbitrarily small, arbitrarily, this is like a math word, does it become arbitrarily small? And that's a really, really interesting question. So mathematically, yes, mathematically, this error does go to zero as delta t goes to zero. But in practice, on a computer, the answer is absolutely not. Okay, so the answer is no, an emphatic no on a computer if you do this numerically because, because uh, the way that the computer represents these numbers has something called numerical round off. Uh, and this is because of numerical truncation error, numerical truncation error, truncation error which is sometimes called round off error, okay? Uh, round off error, round off error. So when you represent a number in a computer, like I type, you know, pi or e or square root of two in a computer, even though we know that those numbers never end, they never, uh, they, they have kind of a, an ever, you know, a continuing sequence of digits and decimals in their decimal representation, the computer has finite memory and finite uh, kind of bits to represent each of those numbers. And so all of our computers agree on formats for, for how to store numbers using a certain number of bits or bytes. And one of the kind of standard uh, types of numbers that we all agree on and use is called a double precision floating point number, which, um, you know, it uses a certain number of bytes, which is, you know, eight bits. And so two to the eight is 32. And is that right? Two to the eight is 32. Two to the five is 32. Two to the eight is uh, 256, I guess. And you know, with a couple of bytes, it's a few 256 times 256 times 256. My, my point is, with a finite number of bits or bytes on a computer, you can only represent a finite number of decimals uh, in any number. Okay, and after that point, anything beyond that, that decimal representation gets truncated or rounded off because it can only be stored using those finite number of bits in a computer. And so uh, double precision floating point numbers, which is kind of the standard for numerical computation, you know, in most computers across the world, unless you specify otherwise, the round off error, uh, which I'm gonna call the error of round off, I'm just defining the symbol, is about 10 to the minus 16. So this is a really important number in computers, at least for double precision, for uh, double floating point precision. We call those double precision numbers. Um, and I can't remember if this is 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, 
I really should remember it's probably 32 bits, um, but I, you, you could just Google you know, double precision number bits and you'll find it. And actually not just that, you'll find the, um, like the, the standard of exactly how the information is stored in those bits. So for example, you know, one of those bits is for if it's plus or minus. Um, a number of those bits are for this 16 you know, decimal places of precision, and then a number of bits is for the exponent, you know, some num plus or minus some number times 10 to an exponent to a power. So that power will also require some bits to represent. And so you can just Google, you know, double precision number format, and you can find all of that information. But on a modern computer, probably even my, you know, smartwatch or your, your phone or whatever, a lot of calculations are done using double precision math, which fundamentally has an error in all of its representations of 10 to the minus 16. Okay, and so specifically, you can like log, you can get onto Python or MATLAB, and you can take some number like square root of two. And you can, I think, say format long in MATLAB, and it'll actually dump out all 16 digits of, of this, this representation, format long and then square root of 2. And if you take square root of 2 plus 10 to the minus 16 over 2, uh, you know, this ER over 2, something smaller than this round off, if you type this in, you know, to MATLAB or Python, it will have the same decimal double precision representation is if you just typed in square root of two. These are gonna have the exact same representation on your computer, which means that it can only specify this number up to those 16 digits of accuracy. If I add something smaller than 10 to the minus 16 to this number, your computer can't tell the difference between those, okay? And so this round off error is going to factor in to this numerical derivative error. So there's the error from the Taylor series, but there's also gonna be an error from the numerical round off. And that's what I wanna show you today, is how these two balance. And it actually makes it so that at some point, decreasing your, del your delta t actually makes things worse, okay? And that, that's kind of interesting. Is there anything else I wanna tell you about double precision? Uh, obviously, I have a lot to say about this. One thing I'll tell you that is actually really important is that numbers like square root of two and e and pi, you know, we know that those have irrational um, expansions and they, they go on forever. Even a number like one third is, you know, 0.33333 forever. The only numbers that will be perfectly represented in double precision are numbers that have a, um, an exact non-repeating sequence in binary. So if I look at a number like, uh, you know, 0.5, in binary, that is literally in binary, so in binary, um, which is what your computer speaks, this would be, you know, this is one half, so it's 0.5. Uh, one in binary, it's it's two to the minus one. It's one in the two to the minus one's place in binary. So 0.5 is uh, 0.1 in binary, and 0.1 in binary is exactly represented with you know 16 digits. I don't actually need all of those 16 digits. I just need you know one digit, and so this is exact. This has no round off error. So so 0.5 or 0.25 or 0.125 have no round off error in a computer because they have perfect decimal representations that go on, you know, that, that it's, you know, zeros forever after. So these numbers actually have no error, but if I generically work with a generic number, some, you know, f of t, it probably is not going to be a perfect truncated binary number. It's going to have this double precision round off. Good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression for dfdt, and we're going to recognize that each of these numbers here probably have a little machine precision round off error. So I can add an ER to each of these numbers uh, because in the computer, they're probably not gonna be represented perfectly. So let's do that. So we have uh, DF DT, but now in a computer, this is equal to, um, and I'm just gonna say equals because I'm gonna have this, this Taylor series error. This is equal to F of you know, T plus delta T minus F of T minus delta T plus each of these has some error, so two machine errors, and these do add up, these accumulate uh, additively, which is a problem, divided by two delta t, plus my order delta t squared, okay? And so essentially what I can do is I can now kind of separate off this error, and I have the thing I want, 
and then two sources of error. So this equals you know, the thing I was trying to compute in the first place, uh, you know, minus f of t minus delta t divided by 2 delta t, 2 delta t, plus er over delta t plus order delta t squared. And so maybe I'll just pick, you know, uh, blue for this and red for this. These are two different sources of error. This is Taylor series error, Taylor series. Uh, yeah, Taylor series error. And this is round off error. This is numerical representation error. So this is round off error. And there are ways of using more bits, so I think like 64 bits or 128 bits or 256 bits, and getting you know quad precision or oct precision. You could get higher precision that would take this up to 10 to the 32 or 10 to the 64. It's much more expensive, and it's not natively supported in a lot of computing architectures. But you could make this ER smaller, this round off error smaller. But for all computers, you're going to have some round off error. And now I hope you can see, at least kind of pictorially, that if I make delta t smaller, it definitely helps my Taylor series error. But I'm dividing by delta t here. And so the smaller I make delta t, the larger I make this round off error. And so at some point, these are going to cross. And at some point, by making this one smaller, I'm actually going to make this one larger. And when these equal each other, that's like the trade off point where I shouldn't make delta t any smaller. So we can quantify this. We can basically say um, that our error, and I'm just going to, um, I'm going to say like the absolute value of our error because it could be plus or minus, and I don't want to think about that. The absolute value of our error is going to be less than or equal to uh, this, you know, e r divided by delta t plus delta t squared. And I'm going to add, I'm going to write down a term m over 6, that's m over 3 factorial, because this order delta t squared, we actually know what the coefficient of that error term was. It was f double prime, uh, I'm sorry, it was f triple prime delta t squared over 3 factorial. So this m is a constant. Uh, it's a constant that we define as the maximum value of f triple prime on this interval from you know t minus delta t to t plus delta t. So it's the max f triple prime, you know t minus delta t to t plus delta t. So um, this is kind of just some math jargon. You can pause and really convince yourself based on the Taylor series that you know, it's not just order delta t squared. There is actually a coefficient on that error term, and it's f triple prime divided by 3 factorial, f triple prime over 6. And so this error is always bounded in the worst case scenario where that f triple prime is as big as it possibly could be. So the max of the absolute value of f triple prime. Okay. Um, that doesn't matter, it's a number. M is a constant. For all that I care about, M is a constant, it's a number. It might be big, it might be small, but whatever, it's a constant. And six is a number. So now I have a function, E is a function of delta T. Okay, and so uh, I'm just gonna call this um, E max. We're gonna call this E, the maximum error. And this is a function of you know, delta T. So this is E max of delta T. And so now what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to try to, uh, to optimize this. So we can take the partial derivative of E max with respect to delta T and set it equal to zero because that's going to be, um, you know, we want to find the minimum error here. I'm going to draw a picture. I think pictures are nice. So let's say this is uh, delta T. And my Taylor series error does get smaller and smaller and smaller as delta t gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so as delta t goes to zero, so does my Taylor series error in kind of this, you know, nice quadratic function. This is, you know, my order delta t squared or my m delta t, six, delta t squared over six, if you like. But my round off error is going to do something like, it's going to be 1 over delta t. It's going to be some constant, some really, really teeny constant times 1 over delta t. 
And so when delta t is zero, it's going to be infinity. And this, you know, very, very small constant e to the e, e sub r divided by delta t. When delta t gets small, eventually this is going to get really, really big. And at this point here, where they, so, so the total error is the sum of these two. The total error is the sum of these two, which is roughly speaking going to look kind of like this shape here, okay? Uh, this blue curve is my round off error. And this green curve is my, ma my, my total error. So what we're trying to find is we're trying to find that sweet spot delta t. We're trying to find this like really, really special delta t, where if we made delta t smaller until this point, our error does decrease because the Taylor series error is decreasing, but before our error starts to increase again because of our round off error getting amplified. So this sweet spot error here um, is, you know, is, this is the error. Uh, there is some special delta t, and that is going to be the point where this Emax has zero slope, right? That's how you optimize functions to find the minimum or maximum of a function, is you would take the derivative of this with respect to delta t and set it equal to zero, so it has zero slope there. And so partial Emax, partial delta t, I can take the derivative of this with respect to delta t, and I get something like, you know, minus er over delta t squared plus delta tm over three, we're setting that equal to zero. And so I move this guy over and I multiply both sides by delta t and I do some stuff and I find out that um, I'm gonna get something like, I don't wanna skip too many steps, I'm gonna get something like delta t, I'm gonna move this over here and multiply both sides by delta t squared. So I'm gonna get a delta t cubed equals E r, 3 e r over m, 3 e r over m. So delta t equals root, cubed root, of 3 e r over m. And you can assume that m, let's just assume that m is a constant that's one, that's like a stupid assumption, but order of magnitude, this number is probably, you know, it's not going to be a bajillion and it's not going to be one over a bajillion. It's going to be order one. This is going to be, this m is going to be about one and three is about one. And so I'm really taking the cubed root of my round off error 10 to the minus 16. That's the number that mostly drives this optimization is how fast this round off error grows. Um, and it's, you know, th this is kind of the relationship here. And so this is approximately equal to 10 to the minus 16 to the one third power, which is about 10 to the minus five. So for a delta t of about 10 to the minus five, you can expect my error to decrease until about 10 to the minus five delta t. And then for even smaller delta t, it's gonna ramp back up again because of this round off error. Anyway, I think this is super cool. You can really actually think about like what's happening in the guts of your computer. There's this numerical round off error. Uh, you can actually compute, you know, what are the terms of error? How do they scale with delta t? And you can do these kind of back of the envelope sketches of, um, of how these things work. Now, if I had a system that had a really, really high third derivative, it was a really jerky system, that's what third derivative is called, jerk, um, then this would be larger and I would have a different delta t. I might, I might want to decrease my delta t more because my Taylor series error might be you know, shifted up. Okay, or if I was working with a single precision, so ER was a bigger number, this round off error would be shifted up and I'd need a bigger delta T. So you can kind of imagine and work through what would happen here. Anyway, I thought this was really important for you to see this because you might just naively think that you can always make delta T go to zero, but at least in the computer, that's a bad idea because of this uh, balance of Taylor series error and round off error. Okay, thank you.